Welcome to Comfrey Havoc number two. This is the final video from down here. There will be no more demonstrations of me doing martial arts. I just didn't feel like going upstairs to make this video. All right, so we're gonna talk about martial arts really quickly though, and I'm gonna try to make this a really short video, 10 minutes max, maybe 11. I watched a video um, that uh, sprung to me to be 100% truthful. I don't know the Sifu's name, so I wanna thank him. He is a JKD instructor. He has one arm. And he made this video, I think it was like maybe 15 minutes long. And everything he said in there, I'd say that he was about 45.5% right. Right? Because he's talking about how a lot of black belt fighters um, have never been in street fights and things like that. And generally, if they get into a street fight, they get their ass kicked, but they can dominate you in the dojo. Now, everything he said on that was a thousand percent right, except for depending on what dojo you come from and how much you put into your fighting and how many fights have you actually been in. Fighting experience is everything. As a person who's been in more street fights, because I've never been in a professional fight, I've been in street fights since I was six years old. I know my way around a fight. I know how to hopefully avoid a fight. But if I'm in a fight, I hope like hell I still have enough skills to survive that some bitch. And I hope that everything that I've learned over the years has improved and elevate it instead of de-elevate it or de-escalate it. Yeah, I hope that my skills are still up to par even after my hip replacement, that I can still take a hit as well as I can give a hit, all right? I'm pretty sure I can take a hit better than I can give a hit at my age. But the point being made is that a lot of martial artists don't know how to fight in the streets. A lot of them don't. So, you know, with the exception of a few professional fighters who have got a little tipsy, as rumors have it lately, you know, I've been busting people's asses in the streets. Those are the exceptions to the rule, much like myself. I can't do a kata out of a wet paper bag with holes in it because I couldn't get my yellow belt in Taekwondo, but I could beat Taekwondo people. Understand how this works? Here it was like Tosan. So we start here, break into here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then one, two, three, four. By the time I figured that shit out, we'd be there all night. I could not get a yellow belt in Tosan for Taekwondo. I couldn't get a green belt in Taekwondo. But when we did sparring, most of those guys couldn't keep up with me. I was never taught katas until I got to Taekwondo. When I was taking Kung Fu, it was still a freestyle form of Kung Fu. There were no katas. Bruce Lee said it himself, if you get stuck in tradition, you become a machine. Machines are programmed to think. A human must be able to think like that. So when you're doing martial arts, you have to understand, you need to make sure that the shit you are doing is field tested. Now, I'm not saying go out there and pick a fight with somebody who's three times your size because... That might not work out for you. But you know, know in your heart that if you have to use this shit, that you should not have any limitations or restrictions outside of the fact that you may kill a person and you don't want that. But know in your heart that you need to be able to know how to fight. So mix up your martial arts. You know, put some boxing in there. Put some kickboxing in there. Get as many styles as you possibly can. Don't ground yourself in one style. I love Kung Fu, but I also love Taekwondo. Except for like that holding and position shit, because that kind of sucked. And then the multiple kick shit, which is kind of sometimes useful, sometimes not. If you're doing like a tournament and showing off, same thing with certain wushu things now, they're very useful for show. Not so much in actual combat. Because if you're kicking me and you're like boom, 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 you know, like where they're marching, uh, you know, that shit. You might get two of them some bitches off on me, but you ain't gonna keep kicking and kicking and kicking and going and thinking it's gonna go down the line. Is that you made that first two? Boom, boom. Oh, I'm sweeping that other foot. Fuck that shit. If I'm already gonna go down, I'm taking that other foot. So you're just not gonna see it coming because you're gonna be so enamored with doing that shit you see on TV, where your foot's just constantly. Da, 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 da. Here's real life. Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna either block all those some bitches. Well, I'm going to take two, and then I'm going to make sure that I break you. So again, he was telling us how, you know, um, 
A lot of motherfucking martial artists, I'm sorry, those were his words, are bullshit when it comes to the street. Well, here's the thing. Your location is everything. This is the, 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 the argument that I had with Master Ennis before I stopped going to his school and before I could come back to his school before he committed Sipaku. My argument was the same argument that I'm going to give you right now. See, everybody in my dojo that I went to, the inner stairway with him, there were maybe, maybe, four people of color. Maybe only four black people. The other three black people knew like I knew. When I go to my neighborhood, these kicks and punches need to be effective. Most of the other people who were not black, they went to the dojo, basically were doing that shit for exercise and rank. And they have no worries about going home and getting jumped. Where not only do I have to worry about getting jumped, I got to worry about getting into my neighborhood without having a problem. You know? When I first started learning, we had just moved over here. And I started taking Taekwondo when the inner stairway was downtown. And I stayed with them from downtown to up at the old Shenandoah Pride Dairy Building where my money started running out. And it was, you know, pay for my car, pay for karate. I can't afford to pay for karate. And my mom won't go let me not pay for my car because I had to pay for the car. And I didn't want to go back to riding the bus to school unless the car broke down, you never saw me on the bus. All right? So I paid for the car. I left karate. Before I left karate, excuse me, it was Taekwondo and the Harate. Did not ask me, the Harate was the Japanese version of Taekwondo, or at least that's what he called it. So he said, well, you can come back when you get your stuff straight. Um, I'll be here, but we're moving to Cherry Avenue. It's like, okay. And that's where everything went the wrong to hell from Mr. Ennis. That's a whole other story, which is what led him to Super Group or Hard Card. So I asked him, I said, why can't I fight for my belt? He said, that's not what we do at the school. I said, I know that's not what we do at the school, but how am I going to know if what you are teaching me is accurate and it's going to work if I can't fight for my belt? And he says, um, well, we don't fight for our belts here. We do katas. And we break bricks. And I said, yeah, but if I can't fight for my belt, how am I going to know that I'm good enough to fight, period? And he didn't really have an answer. So then I went to the Seven Tigers. Seven Tigers told me they don't fight for belts. All I wanted to do was fight for a black belt so that I could actually have a black belt. That's it. Because the way I've seen it, if I could beat a black belt, it's not that the black belt is bad. It just means that I'm on his level. But no one would let me fight for the belt. I went to the International Black Belt Center. We don't fight for our belts. When I went to the Three Emperors, they were going out of business and they also didn't fight for their belts. But the guy who ran it was part Creek. So we were good friends. I have no idea where he is now. Thank you, brother, wherever you are. But it seems like every dojo I went to, I wanted to fight for my belt, and they told me the same shit. We don't fight for belts here. And I said, okay, so let me get this straight. If we don't fight for our belts, how do we know our shit is legit? And he goes, well, you'll know when you win. And it's like, I've never lost a street fight. Before I started doing martial arts, I never lost a street fight. When all I had was these two things here, before I even know that I could use these motherfuckers as weapons. How do I know I can win? Now, I've had some scrimmages before I started taking Taekwondo with Mr. Ennis. In fact, when I was 15, before I left for the summertime, I had a whole fight in the projects, a whole week except for Wednesday. Got in a fight on Monday, got in a fight on Tuesday, but Tuesday was more like an argument, less of a fight. Wednesday, there was my break day. Thursday, I got into a fight with the guy's brother that I got into a fight with on Tuesday. But it came down to who's going to hit who with the iron pipe, who's going to hit who with the stick. He got a stick, I got an iron pipe, and I said, you get to go first. He threw down the stick and ran away, and I threw around the iron pipe, and it was done. And what started that fight was, it was four on one, and we were playing wrestling. I was working Ronnie Garvin, and my boy David so happened to be Sting without the makeup. And we were fighting on a pissy mattress. So... I couldn't reach my corner, and it was somehow it was a four-on-two tag team match. 
I don't know why that even was a thing, but it was a thing for us. I don't know if it was ever a thing for WCW or NWA, whichever one it was at the time, because he was Sting and I was Ronnie Garvey. So one guy was over here, one guy was over here, one guy was here, and one guy was here. So the two guys over here, I said, dude, he's like, I can't come in. You know the rules. I said, it's a tag team, and they jump. You in their corner. You know karate. And then it snapped on me. I said, oh, yeah. I said, but Rocky Ronnie Garvin does it. He said, you don't know what the fuck Rocky Ronnie Garvin knows to hands of stone. Good point. So I slung the two on my arms into each other. They literally hit heads and fell onto the pissing mattress. The guy over here, I slung this way, and he went that way. This guy wouldn't let go. It's like a pit bull. So I snatched my leg in. I kicked it back out and got him in the gut. He fell down and started crying. Everybody else was okay with the rough housing, but he wasn't. He went and picked up a stick. I grabbed an iron pipe. I didn't have to go that far. It was like right there. So I grabbed the iron pipe and said, all right, you go first. He's like, nah, man, nah. I'm going to get my brother to fuck you up. I said, your brother who got his leg broke by a 10-year-old, I don't think that's going to work out in either one of y'all favor. So I threw down the pipe after he left, and that was it. And the next day, fateful Friday, my sister and I got into it, and she hit me with these rocks. And the god of speed, Hermes, was in her feet. And I couldn't catch her. As fast as I was for that day, God was on her side until she got to that damn fence in the big children's park. And I had beef with the guy who happened to be in the park, and I didn't think that, you know, anything was ever going to happen about that until it did. So when I grabbed my sister, he hit me in the head with a bunch of those rocks and rubbery things. And that's where all hell broke loose, which is why I'm going to get back to we should be able to fight for our belts. Now, I was 15, this guy was 13, and he was every bit of almost seven feet tall. And I had on these golf clicks. Which is probably why I couldn't run that fast to catch him. But in a, in a, in a good way, those golf clicks saved my life. Because I don't think I would have beat the guy without him. Because I was scared of shit. So when I went over there, I really wasn't that scared at first. And I tagged him with my left hand. It's like, boom! You know, he's sitting down, so about my size. And when he stood up, I realized how big this motherfucker really was. And it was like Wolverine and the Hawk. And I was like, oh my God. And he pushed me. I slid into a fight stance. He came at me. Bam! I leveled him. But he didn't move. He barely shook his jaw. And then I remembered, this dude has asthma. But about that time, my fear started to overwhelm me. And it was like my soul jumped out my body and I said, you about to die, motherfucker. And then he came at me, he pushed me, and I slid back again. And when he came at me again, I said, I'm going to induce an asthma attack. So if I can hit him in his ribs, in his lungs, I can bring him down. The whole time I'm thinking this in my head, I'm swinging. Boom, boom, boom. Now, I remember throwing three lefts. People around the project said I threw about 15 punches in all. I don't remember that. I was true to the guy, I don't remember more than three laps. I remember boom, boom, boom. And him stepping back and breathing hard. It's like, I got him. You know, in my head, I'm thinking, I got him. I just got to hit him a couple more times. He's going to fucking pass out because he can't breathe because he got asthma. Then he grabbed his leg. Started pulling me. And then he had help who came out of nowhere. This hand felt like it was on fire. And I couldn't release it. And it was drawn. It was ready. It wouldn't fire from the chamber. But this foot saw his head. And just kept going. Boom, 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 boom. And then the cops came. So when the cops came, picked him up, and the cop apparently knew his parents so better, dusted him off, and sent them home. The cop told me if I got into one more fight in the projects, then we would be the victim. Now, I'll have you know, in all four of those fights, I never started them. Never started them. But I did finish them. Now, like I said, on Monday, I might have started them. But I didn't start it in the physical sense. Because my boy, we were friends, we were good friends, and there was a discussion about your teeth and your skin, and it was on like the Discovery Channel or some channel the night before, and he said that I wasn't a human being. And I started scooping dirt in his backpack and all kinds of other shit, so you can say I started it. But he drew first blood, because he kicked me in the ass, and I fell on my face in the dirt. I'm very protective of my face. This is before I burned it off. I was very protective of my face, because everybody always kept telling me I'm ugly, and I started believing that shit. And sometimes I still believe it. So I pushed up from a push-up into a spinning back kick. So, that would look more like this. I went straight up, 
and I went boom, and it was more like a spinning wheel kick, so it was more like wham, and I caught him, and he was on my mom's car, and he started sliding down the car, and I said boom, 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 boom. That was pretty much the end of the fight. He got into the house. He told his mom what I did to him. His mom called my mom. I got into deep shit. End of the subject. The next day was that Tuesday, and that was just an argument because one of my friends, like, y'all don't want to fuck with him. He's a fucking ninja. So it's going to be two on one. And I said, well, if they're going to beat my ass, they're going to beat me in front of my house so I can drop my backpack and I can crawl into the house, come back and get the backpack later. But when I dropped my bag, they hauled ass. So I won that fight without throwing a punch. Back to the main point. So I go home. And then I go to my second home in Smithfield. Knowing now that I am skillful. Knowing now that no one can call me a phony. Knowing now that no one can call me Danielle son or Bruce Leroy because I beat somebody three times my size. So somewhere in that summer, I get to fight with this cat named Corey because we're boxing. I think Mike Tyson that either just came out or was coming out or some shit. And Mike Tyson was the subject of the fight. I'm not a boxer. I can brawl, but I ain't no boxer. Let's not lie. I'm not a fucking boxer. Not a trained boxer. I can fight. I knew I could fight. So we're playing boxing. And the rules were pull your punches. This motherfucker wasn't pulling his punches. Now, for those who don't know what that means, this is a pull punch. You know, it's, it's got just enough power behind it to let you know that there could be some oomph behind that bitch. That is not a pull punch. That is a full powered punch where somebody gonna get hurt or somebody gonna sleep or I'm gonna break my fucking hand on your face. Case in point, he wasn't pulling his punches. And we had gloves on. And for every time that I hit him once, he hit me with a three piece. So I'd be like, boom, 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 boom. You know? And he wasn't pulling his punches. He was literally trying to knock me the fuck out. Now mind you, I'm coming into the summer beating somebody way bigger than this guy. No one that I'm overconfident, but no one that my skills will get me through. So he's smoking my ass with this boxing shit. I mean, he's literally eating me up. Boom, boom. If, if I block one, I got hit by two more on the other side. It's like, he's throwing a right, boom, bam, bam, two lefts. I'm like, all right, dude, pull your punches. He never hit me in the body. He never ever went for the body. He always kept trying to hit me in the fucking head. He's trying to knock me the fuck out for those who don't know what that means. If you're fighting someone who never goes to the body, they're always trying to go for a knockout. Because they don't know shit about the human body. But if you take out the body, the head will fall too. But he was trying to knock me the fuck out. And I think we went maybe two rounds before I got pissed off. And every time he hit me, you know, going boom, 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 boom. Every time. And it was like, I hit him once, he hit me three times. If I hit him twice, he hit me three or four more times than I hit him. So if we were going by points, I pretty much lost, lost the fight. Without a doubt. But then, he hit me with this shit. It didn't rock my bell, but it pissed me off so bad. And I said, that's it. You're fucking dead. And my gloves were on pretty tight. And I said, shh. Them motherfuckers came off, and I went to step to them. And my dear old dad, God rest his soul, called my name twice. And my dad's old school. If I call you a third time, your ass is beat whether you heard me or not. So, when, when, I guess when he hit me, my dad must have heard me say, all right, motherfucker, you're a dead man. And I threw them gloves off, and I started stepping. Jimmy! Jimmy! Don't make me come back there. I said, you just saved your ass. And I walked off. And my father said, did you agree to the fight? And I said, yeah. What was the rules for him to pull his punches and for me not to use any kicks? He's like, so you basically fucked yourself. I said, yeah. Did you honestly think that he was going to pull his punches? Yes. Because I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Some people actually do have honor. This motherfucker didn't, apparently. And my dad said, you stay away from him until the end of the summertime. That way I don't have to go in a rush to get your ass out of jail for, for juvenile hall for the summertime for you beating the fuck out of somebody because you know karate and he don't. And I was like, okay, well, he lives right next door. It's kind of hard to stay away from him. You heard what I said. So every time I seen him, I was like, you know what? I said, don't ever let me catch you by yourself. And don't ever let me catch you when my dad ain't around. And my dad said, I heard that. I said, yeah, I'm just letting him know. 
If I catch him when you ain't around, I'm going to fuck him up. That's just that simple because we could have been sportsmanly like, and him pulling his punches made the fight fair. He won't pull in his punches. He was trying to hurt me. I've been in situations like this before where people have tried to hurt me and I've had to teach them a damn good lesson, i.e. playing football without equipment. I'll tell you that story too. Don't worry. This is the longest video because it's the last video down here that I'm going to make. So, a few years later, I never got up with the guy ever again because my dad moved out of Smithfield, so I never got to go back until I turned like 2021. Yeah, I never went back to Smithfield until like 2021. So I never, never even considered going back. I stopped worrying about it. Now, I got these friends who played football on the football team. And the only thing that mattered to me was training. And that's all I did. If I wasn't at work at school, I was in this basement training. There's videos on VHS tapes. If I ever find them, I'll show them. But anyway, so I'm busting my rump and I'm training my ass off. And then my friends decide, hey, Jay, we need a couple of bodies to uh, play football with us before practice or whatever. I was like, all right. I don't like football because I can't catch. So I'm playing football with football players from CHS, and they're constantly trying to take out my knees and trying to make me flip like they see on the NFL and all that shit. You know? I've watched a few NFL tapes, and I've seen people flip, and the only thing I said was, God damn. So for three weekends in a row, they kept trying to do that shit. They're like, yeah, I said, yeah, I'm good. It's like, so that fourth weekend, it's like, yeah, we're going to fuck James up. We're going to fuck up his knees because he thinks he's a badass that karate shit. First and foremost, if you're going to talk about a plan, it should probably not be where someone can actually hear it. So one guy went down at my knees and he flipped me a little bit, but I didn't really flip. I just went down and my knees were hurting. I was like, okay, that's what these motherfuckers trying to do. So the game goes on for a little bit. And this is the short version, by the way. And they keep trying that shit. So I'm like, all right, these motherfuckers, they trying to hurt me. So okay. So I talked to my bro B. I said, hey, look. Give me the ball, we're about to score a touchdown. Say like, what? Hand me the ball. We score on a fucking touchdown. We already losing. You ain't got nothing to lose by giving me that goddamn ball. I said, plus these guys keep trying to fuck me up. So I'm gonna show them how it feels to get fucked up. So, give me the ball. Guy come at me. I got the ball. It's cradle. No. Do, 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 do. I open my hand up. Boom! Kick the shit out of some bitch. Step over him, keep on getting. Another dude come at me. Boom! Kick the shit out of that motherfucker. Still got the ball, by the way. It's crazy. Coming in there. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Another guy. Boom. Kick the ball. Get to the other guy. Kick him too. Touchdown. Spike the ball. Look back. Four motherfuckers laid over on the ground. Holding their bodies hurt. It's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. I said, oh. And y'all legally can't be trying to take my knees out either. But since y'all want to play rough... Every time you come at me, I'm going to kick you in the fucking face. I said, you want to play fair or y'all want to play rough? I said, because I can play rough too. I don't take kung fu for nothing. So, I was taking taco on the time, by the way. I said, you want to tackle me? You tackle me up in the body, right? Or you get fucked up. One of the guys that was hurt real bad said, nah, we tag him. We don't tackle him no more. So, whenever we play, they tag me. Until they got tired of having to tag me because they knew I was going to fuck them up. So I was no longer invited to play with them on uh, Saturdays ever the fuck again. So that only lasted for like a month and a half. And then there was no more invites to play football. It's like, nah, you can't play with us, dude. You fucking us up so we can't even go play the football game because you don't fuck us up so bad. I said, well, now you know how it feels when you're purposely trying to hurt somebody. I was like, just think about what would have happened if I was really mad. And I really got a hold of your ass. After that, no more. So, bottom line, if you're going to fight, it might help to actually know how to fight. But the bottom line of this is, you know, that martial artist with the one arm was right. 30% of what you learn in that dojo transfers to the street. That other 70%, good for show, it also depends on who the fuck you're fighting when you're out in the streets. If you're fighting somebody who's good, who's good, who's fucking been doing this shit for a while and not just in the street, but like MMA and training and fighting, you're probably going to get fucked up. When I was in the army and we were learning combatives besides the BJJ that I totally suck at, one of the drill sergeants said the same shit that I'm about to say now. He said, this combative shit's going to get you guys fucking killed. You might want to pick up extra martial arts once you get in the field. When y'all go down range and do GFT and shit, 
you know, y'all got all these damn rules and shit, but nine times out of the ten, because he was mad, he had just came from a combative, um, something or another, he was high-ranking, um, soldier, he was like, sergeant first class or some shit, because we had to do guard duty, he's like, man, that shit that they teaching y'all for fighting, y'all gonna die, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna die, he's like, how come, I said, because I've been doing martial arts, I was seven years old, this shit you, they teaching us, you right. They are going to die. He said, well, what did you study? I said, man, I studied Taekwondo. I studied Kung Fu. I studied Karate. I studied some kickboxing. I said, you name it, I probably studied. I said, even Capoeira. He's like, I said, yeah, man. I'm fucking 37 years old. You know, I ain't these little 18-year-old whippersnappers about this motherfucker. You know, they don't fucking know. I said, you know, if you don't teach somebody right, you're just going to fucking get them fucked up. And I said, and not everybody follows the rules, you know. You fight in the street, nobody gives a flying fuck if you got a black belt or not. It's gonna fuck you up, you know. And, and you know, from then on, you know, I've always thought if I could just fight for my belt, that I would be great. Then I had this hip replacement, and I tried to look into martial arts, and they was like, yeah, yeah, we don't fight for our belts. And I was like, yeah, see, that's the problem. It's like, well, I said, think about it. All right, somebody can break a brick and can break a board, doesn't mean they can. Fight somebody who can fight back, you know. That black belt means absolutely nothing when you're actually in combat. He's like, yeah, you're probably right, but that's not what we do here. And I said, well, if I ever open up a damn school, you're fighting for your belt. I said, you whoop my ass, you got your belt. He's like, what? He said, yeah, you whoop my ass, you got your belt. He's like, why is that? I said, because one, that means I fucked up. Or it means I'm a really good teacher. Now, here's the thing about fighting. All right. First and foremost, I don't give a flying fuck who you are. It hurts to get hit. It hurts and it sucks. And if you're not really good at taking one, you're going to sleep. Now, here's that thing. You know, um, in a real fight, and I'm going to say this because everybody else is going to hate me and I'm going to say it because it's the truth. In a real fight, rather it be in the streets, rather it be in a dojo, your size really doesn't matter. That skill level and that experience is the only thing that's going to get you through a fight and, and a little bit of fear. I went through a lot of shit. When I was learning BJJ, I was getting my ass whooped. Without a doubt, I was getting my ass whooped. Of course, they set a guy on me that was like 170 pounds higher than me, and he was way taller. And I headbutt him in his motherfucking dick every fucking chance I could because it was the only way that I could beat him. Be honest about this shit. He was heavier, and everything that they showed me to do wasn't fucking working, which leads back to that drill sergeant telling us that that shit was going to get us killed. And I told him, you're right. I said, because this BJJ shit, I was like, um, I'm new to the game with that. And I said, you got to get me on the ground. And that's where you're going to have a problem. I said, well, I said, yeah, because we start on our backs. I said, I was trained to never let nobody get me on the ground for more than four seconds. Now, four seconds is not a long time. If I dive out the way and roll across that ground, you better believe I'm going to be on my feet before you get near me. I said, if you sweep my foot and I'm on my back, I know how to defend. You got to come down and get me. That ain't going to be good for you. But, you know, the thing is, nine times out of ten, 30% of the shit that you learn in that dojo transfers for street. The other 70 cent, you know, it's like, yeah, everybody knows how to block. Everybody knows how to kick and everybody knows how to punch. Where you punch and how hard you hit are the most important things. Your body size, not a factor. Your height, not a factor. Your strength, tiny factor. Your toughness, a big factor. I would like to say this before I leave out. For me, I've learned that it's better to be tougher than it is to be stronger. Not everybody can get physical peak human condition. You're not genetically built that way. You're not genetically built that way. I'm not genetically built that way to be stronger than my opponent. But this bitch right here, superior intellect and fighting experience, you will survive. Thank you for watching. It's come forever number two. Be seeing you.